Yeah, probably the greatest thing about what I do for a living is the collaboration that happens when people um, convene. I mean, it could be one other person, it could be six other people. You know, when we all get in a room together and we decide, okay, what are we going to do? You just find one piece of common ground, and it could be referencing a, uh, the Smiths. I'm much better when I'm bouncing off other people and they're giving, feeding me ideas and we're collaborating. A good guitar sound can be produced as much by the amplifier as the instrument. In other words, we could describe a sound as a classic Les Paul with a humbucker through a Marshall 4x12 cabinet, if we wanted to be more specific. And through a Marshall 4x12 using a particular amplifier head, if we wanted to get even further into the DNA of a guitar sound. Many great guitar sounds have relied upon the coloration and distortion produced by amplifiers. It's virtually universally accepted that guitars sound better through tube electronics. That's valve for you Brits. Tim uses a wide variety of tube or valve amplifiers, all of which, interestingly, can get fed into a Marshall 4x12 cabinet that he has imprisoned in a sort of soundproofed nuclear fallout shelter in his garage. It's portable, I can disassemble it. It weighs 1,200 pounds, and it's pretty soundproof. I have a, uh, an amp switcher here that allows me just to choose. It runs everything. It's basically a patch bay with, on a rotary switch. So I just plug it into the front of the thing and choose it. I just choose it right here. Really, the whole definition of, of what we do as electric guitar players is just about the tube. I mean, it's, it's, that's the distortion. That, that's what gives us... It's everything. The, you know, the tube guitar amp is everything. And it's amazing that something that old and antiquated is basically at the heart of what we do as electric guitar players. For me, there's, there's always noise. As a guitar player, it's just how much noise. And so for me, it's always about disguising noise. And I have something that's an appendage at this point, which is a volume pedal under my right foot. And the minute I stop playing, I draw that thing back. Because if I put a pedal in front of this, it's going to be so noisy. So I'll, I'll make the sound. Draw the pedal back and the noise disappears. If I don't use the pedal... recording chain doesn't stop at the amplifier and loudspeaker. A loudspeaker will need to be mic'd in order to get the signal into your recording medium. One of the most frustrating things about miking an electric guitar is that when you hear an electric guitar and you're standing in front of the amp, there's a tremendous amount of air being moved and you feel it in your chest and your stomach. You take that same sound, that glorious sound, and you hear it through the microphone and it sounds this big because it's going through something that big. And so you have to make slightly different choices with sound and tone in order to kind of bring it back to size. I've always had more luck with condenser mics on guitar cabinets because they just tend to have a smoother response. Dynamics tend to have a mid-range nastiness that condenser mics don't have. And guitars are famous for mid-range honks, so if you can minimize that by using a full-range mic, you'll be better off. You can make a guitar sound really nasty by putting the mic in the wrong place, too close to the center of the speaker cone. If you go right to the midpoint of the speaker cone, you're likely to get a shreddy, tearing sound. Whereas if you mic it a little further back, and perhaps favor the outside edge of the cone, it's definitely going to be smoother. Of course, you don't have to use just one mic. You can use several mics at different distances. If you have a cabinet with several speakers, you can put a mic on each speaker mic the bottom, put one at the top, take a mic away, put it six feet away from the cabinet, put a mic at the other end of the room, it's all down to taste. <laughs>